Hey there, body of Christ, or should I say, beloved of God, not only body of Christ, whoever you are, very welcome in this video or to this video. And we are in the middle. We just started a study, a series about the path towards glory. And we will see um, throughout this study that glory tastes way better after suffering and that is exactly what god is doing with every being in his creation so let's continue with the slides so this was the last one uh, and we've seen here that israel has a great expectation we are talking about the chosen ones out of israel that's a certain um, a separate group of believers and they are not more or less not applicable in this day and age uh, except if there is a remnant a small remnant according to the choice of grace as romans 11 says but we will continue because there is much more to explore here of course we saw that however clear these predictions of the prophets were they themselves didn't truly understand to what time especially they referred so let's continue how much and what kind of time would there be between the suffering of the messiah and the glory of the kingdom of peace how much they didn't know they searched and searched for it and in vain many prophecies even speak in the same breath about the first coming and the return of christ for example Zechariah 9 9 predicts a humble messiah who will come to jerusalem on a donkey while the following verse, the very following verse, speaks about his rule in Jerusalem over the nations. As an example, that is the humiliation of the past and the glory of the future in one stroke of the pen. So God reveals, uh, revealed truths always step by step until Paul with paul he re he revealed the rest the 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 rest of the truths he wanted to reveal to everyone who is studying scripture of course and and whose eyes are being opened by holy spirit the time between and what would take place therein was hidden on purpose by god from the prophets it is this secret that was revealed to the apostle paul and is the main subject of his epistles so ultimately god did reveal these secrets but he revealed it to one person and i'm talking about the highest secrets of course let's re let's read ephesians 3 verse 3 uh, and 4 for by revelation the secret is made known to me says paul according as i write before in brief by which you who are reading are able to apprehend my understanding in the secret of the christ a very important uh, phrase there the secret of the christ that's huge verse five and six so this is three and four and then verse 5 and 6 which in other generations is not made known to the sons of humanity as it was now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets and what is the secret in spirit the nations are to be joined and joyous of an allotment and a joint body and joint partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the evangel <laughs> this already while stated in words is is not enough to to really comprehend what it entails not for me and i don't think for you as well i mean this is 
so huge that we are to be the believers in Paul's evangel are to be joint and joyous of an allotment, the allotment of Christ, namely, and a joint body and joint partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the evangel. This is huge and it is, and it is tremendous. That the nations would share in the glory of the future Israelite world empire was no secret because nations would be blessed but they would be blessed through Israel but and 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 the prophetic books are full of this truth that the nations on earth would be blessed through Israel that was no secret however that believers from the nations would be part of the Messiah himself his body fellow members of his body while Israel at the same time is sidelined through unbelief that was untraceably hidden from the prophets and they search in their own writings but in vain it was at first revealed this large secret it was revealed to Paul and through Paul to us Ephesians 3 8 to me less than the least of all saints was granted this grace to bring the evangel of the untraceable riches of Christ to the nations they were on these riches were untraceable in the Hebrew scriptures for the prophets they couldn't trace them in any way so that's very important to realize that <coughs> Ephesians 3 verse 9 through 11 and to enlighten all to what is the administration as to what is the administration of the secret which has been concealed from the eons in God who creates all. Again, this administration we are living in currently, it's called the administration of the secret, it has been concealed in God from when? From the eons. So even it was already concealed before the eons started. That is thousands and probably tens of thousands of years ago so it's hidden or concealed in God that now may be made known to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials through the ecclesia that's the body of Christ the multifarious wisdom of God in accord with the purpose of the eons which he makes in Christ Jesus our Lord <laughs> wow so now is the time to make known these secrets that were concealed in God from the eons and they are made known to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials right now how is it possible how can it be because they are as we speak as I speak now they are gazing at us they send their messengers to spy so to speak on us to gaze at us and to tell them what they've seen and what did they see they've seen us busy in our humiliated bodies they've seen us do or they are seeing us doing things that are humiliating making mistakes sinning how about that or doing stuff that maybe is so embarrassing they are gazing at us they are gazing upon us we are a theater to them according to 1st Corinthians chapter 6 so if you realize this then you also know that uh, our, when our future is to be glorified 
that they as no one else they will see the difference <laughs> as no one else the difference between our humiliation and our glorification they will see that and i think they will be baffled by it when they will see then later they will see us again but now in our glorified state oh boy let's continue a foretaste of glory that's what the three disciples peter john and james that's john brother john's brother not jesus brother but john's brother got to have a glance into the future so these three disciples they got to have a foretaste of earthly glory uh, they got a glance into the future how it's a well-known story jesus calls the event on the mount of transfiguration a vision he called it a vision afterwards matthew 79 it is the same greek word horama used in acts 10 17 for the vision that peter had while he was praying on the roof remember he had a vision of a sheet with uh, unclean animals on it and he was then instructed to take and eat remember that was the same greek word horama it's a vision a vision so like john later in revelation these three disciples have been moved in the day of the lord you could say that jesus had declared in matthew 16 28 that some of the twelve wouldn't taste death until they saw the son of man coming in his kingdom and these three uh, uh, some of the twelve are these three disciples and they saw the son of man coming in his kingdom through a vision let's read matthew 17 verse 1 through 3 and after six days how about this one let's stop here after six days why does god through holy spirit find it necessary to put after six days what do we care after six days how about of course we know why right we know in the second letter of peter that a day is like a thousand years for god it's a hint a hint so after six days means on the seventh day so the seventh millennium after six millennia on the seventh in the seventh millennium that is after six days and that's what it means so it was literally six days it's a symbol on the one hand but it's also on the surface true after six days jesus literal days jesus is taking aside peter and james and john his brother and is bringing them up into a high mountain privately and was transformed in front of them and his face shines as the sun yet his garments became white as the light and lo moses and elijah were seen by them conferring with him with christ think about it jesus had not been had not yet been glorified at a time so he had not really been glorified at a time nor had moses or elijah because they are still dead they were dead at the time and they are still dead but peter james and john were able to see this through a so-called window into the future i hope you can see and understand that coming to the end of his life peter looks back on what he once experienced on the mount of transfiguration he then notes that on this occasion he was an eye witness of the parousia the greek word parousia means presence of our lord jesus christ you can read about that in second peter 1 verse 16. in other words 
he already saw what is still future until today and thus confirmed the prophetic word and that's verse 19. so as if in time travel he was moved to the seventh day meaning the day of the millennial kingdom that's what happened to the three disciples we are to realize very important here that if moses and elijah had actually really been glorified at a time then christ would not be the first fruit nor would any currently have immortality of course not that's the point but christ is the first and now also the only man who has immortality read about that in 1 corinthians 15 23 and 1 timothy 6 verse 16. philippians 4 19 uh, to 20. now my god shall be willing your every need in accord with his riches in glory in christ jesus now watch this to our god and father be glory for the eons of the eons amen so be it to our god and father belongs all glory so in an absolute sense all glory belongs to our god and father be aware of that so what is more worthy than to give the praise that is due to the one god and father no longer just as my god here no longer just as my god as in the previous verse but as our god and father here one could conceive of this circle as small by referring the word the word our our here to those who now know god as such of course it's a very small circle of people who know god as such as our god and father however it goes so much further remember that earlier in this epistle paul placed our god and father in a universal perspective in the same epistle philippians 2 verse 9 through 11. ultimately every knee will bow and every tongue will acclaim that jesus is lord to the glory of god the father then it will be will become apparent that god is actually the father of every creature then at that time in the future it will become apparent it is this glory that paul had in mind here as it only becomes reality in the mighty harmonious uh, final court of the eons of the eons in which god will get all the glory that already belongs to him so i would say let let's leave it at this slide we will of course continue in the next video um, and uh, i would all only advise you to ponder on these things and let them encourage you let them fuel your expectation more and more so that we stand strong here in this crooked world system that we live in full of lies and we will be uh, uh we will be sure to stand in the grace that we are aware that we have and we can look upon the expectation that is awaiting us thank you very much for watching and see you next time bye bye